Fox Sports. Sunday baseball from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. The Rays have their sights set on the sweep this afternoon. Up two games to none on the Minnesota Twins. Game three and the final game of this homestand straight ahead. Inside Tropicana Field, we welcome you to another afternoon of Rays baseball. Alongside Arrestes Destrada, I'm Rich Hollenberg, Dwayne Stats, and Brian Anderson with the call coming up. But, oh, the offense has been rolling as of late. Three of their last five games, they've scored eight or more runs. But the pitching has certainly been on point as well. Yeah, I tell you, Rich, uh, the, the phrase that I'm kind of feeling right now, this homestand, the latter part, and how well they've been playing, pitching, hitting, everything, is that they're finally settling in. We're really seeing the offense, what I thought the offense would be, spraying the ball around a little bit of power but so the situational hitting and then the pitching now it's really settling in the big three now I've had you know multiple good starts Faria Archer obviously Snell has been fantastic with last night's seven inning performance now I'm looking for Chirinos to do the same and keep it going I think the pitching's finally really listening to their coach Kyle Snyder yeah Kyle Snyder has had a major impact especially on the young staff the Farias the Snells and today the Yanni Chirinos is in his first year with the big club but multiple years in this organization he has certainly been connected to this pitching staff and is a big part of the success as part of kids Sunday fun day here's pitching coach Kyle Snyder on a tip for the Little League pitchers out there all right so I'm here with Colt nine years old young pitcher strong body kid and, and one of the things that you know I'd like to talk a little bit about in terms of with some of the things that we would emphasize with you know with players Colt's age would be kind of the foundation of the drive leg all right and, and really getting to the point where you know from the waist down we're maximizing what we're able to put out and, and how that if you know affects our ability to find the strike zone but also find the strike zone and still maintain as much athleticism as possible so once you go ahead and go through your delivery, Cole. Very good. All right. So I think one of the big keys here we're talking about is just the, the fact that our drive leg is taking our lead leg where it's going. It's something that we talk quite a bit about. Jake Faria, uh, when he came up midseason last year, was a lot of the things that we had talked about early in the season in terms of just you know, really maximizing the output of the body to minimize stress on the arm. Uh, obviously something that we would really want to prioritize with somebody that's Colts age as well. It's less about throwing strikes for me, although that's certainly a, a big component of this, but it's, it's trying to figure out how to be the best athlete we can be on the mound and then being able to take it from there. Most guys that, be, you know, that, that, are, that are really good athletes on the mound don't sacrifice their ability to command the pitch or you know, the ability to command the zone. You know, so those are things that I would really prioritize with, you know, with pitchers that are Colts age. Well, bullpen day for the Rays is now Yanni Day in Tampa Bay. When we come back, Dwayne and B.A. will have the call with more on today's starters and a first pitch as we are under seven minutes to go before Yanni Chirinos starts the game. The Rays and the Twins, game three of this three-game stand. We're back after this.
Sports Zone is brought to you by W.B. Mason. Who bought W.B. Mason? The official office supply company of the Tampa Bay Rays. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Fans come again before the wrap-up game of the series and the homestand. Yanni Chirinos on the hill for the Rays. Making his fourth start, his fifth appearance, opposed by right-hander Phil Hughes. Surge led by Mr. Clutch. Denard spans three RBIs and a two homer night from CJ Crone, cruising to a 10 1 victory. Today, right hander Yanni Chirinos goes to the hill as Tampa Bay looks for the series sweep. We welcome you back to Tropicana Field where Yanni Chirinos heads to the mound to make the start. Rays big winners in each of the first two games of this series. They won three in a row taking the final game of the series from the Texas Rangers and then defeating Minnesota 8 7 and 10 on Friday 10 to 1 last night and this afternoon they go for the series sweep. Take a look at the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Ryan Dozier will lead it off for Minnesota, followed by Joe Maurer and then Robbie Grossman. Eddie Rosario will hit cleanup and left, followed by Logan Morrison and Eduardo Escobar. Max Kepler's in center hitting seventh. It will be A. Ray Autoranza, the shortstop. And the number nine hitter, Castro, will be doing the catching. Well, and Yanni Chirinos makes his first start as an official member of the Rays starting rotation. Kevin Cash making that announcement a couple of days ago, and for good reason. When you look at his body of work, 0-1 record, but the ERA 2-7-0, 20 innings, just five walks, 15 strikeouts. Heavy sinker, good slider, devastating split finger. Dozier continues to be a very hot hitter leading off two hits last night leading back into last year a 22 game hitting streak all 15 this year of course and here's Chirino set to go to work first pitch of the afternoon and that ball is shot foul out of play beyond the left field corner strike one.
3 0 3 start for Dozier. And a popper and a short left. That goes Echeverria from shortstop to grab it. Dozier is retired. Now let's take a look at the rest of the Rays defense brought to you by our good friends at Gold and Diamond Source. In the outfield left to right we have Span Smith and Gomez and across that infield third to first Daniel Robertson of course Echeverria Wendell and Miller Jesus Sucre will be behind the plate. Well Joe Maurer the designated hitter. Jumping away from Torinos. Mauer 0 for 8 in the series with a walk and a run scored. Start for Torino's at 270 ERA coming in. And now Maurer way out in front, three and zero. Grossman hitting third. He is on deck. Torino's coming off the. Outing against Texas. They gave up six runs in five and two thirds. There's a strike, three and one. And he was not quite as sharp as the line would indicate against Texas as he had been against two outings versus Boston and one against the White Sox. He was very good first three times out this year. Now he's back full with the count at three and two on that foul ball. Well, a big reason why Yanni Chirinos really doesn't mess around with hitters. When he feels good on the mound, comfortable, and everything is working for him, he attacks the strike zone, a lot of first pitch strikes. And tries to put you away as quickly as he can. He will get some strikeouts because he's got good stuff, but he likes early in the count contact. And he loses Maurer down and in. Well, that's one of the reasons when you look at his pitches per inning so far this year, even with the uh, outing against Texas, he's still fewer than 14 pitches per inning. Yeah, and the gold standard is 15 and you don't see too many guys even at 15 but to be down like you said under 14 in inning lets you know heavy sinker he's got a good slider we saw that the split finger in Boston was the best that we've seen it and that pitch that day was as good as you will see now Robbie Grossman. Takes a pitch down. Grossman had two hits last night, a double and a single. One and one. The other thing interesting about Chirinos is this right here. You get down into the three, four, and five hitters. What a start that is. Uh, second best in all of Major League Baseball, of course. 087 against the heart, your run producers. Two and one now to Grossman. No, but still early, too. So it'll be interesting to see as the season goes on the adjustments that Yanni Chirinos is forced to make. Right now, kind of an unknown.
hands it by Grossman. That's that late movement, and that's the that's the sinker. Actually, that was more of a, a fastball with heavy run than a sinker. But this pitch starts on the plate. Look at it just take off, and actually Robbie Grossman ends up running out of bat. That's some kind of movement up there for a pitcher with that kind of run, kind of finish on a pitch with good velocity too. And Grossman had on strikes reaching for that one and, and, and Dwayne he did a great job on that sinker that had more sink to it it was further down in the zone but he took it even a little bit further off the plate I'm telling Robbie Grossman how far are you willing to walk off the plate with me still can't reach it that's filthy I'll take a look at the uh, lefty righty matchup and against lefties 189 and with that kind of run. Absolutely. You, you think about the way that he's able to, you know, front door it every now and then to keep you honest, but run the sinker off the plate to go with the split. Not that far. <laughs> and that's exactly what Sucre. I'll tell you, I love watching Jesus Sucre behind the plate. When he's got a young pitcher out there, the way that he is very demonstrative in his actions, you know, showing you where you want the ball, the, the head. I mean, he really, like right there. Perfect example. Give me the down here. Yeah, he gives that pitcher the idea that he certainly is with him every pitch of the way, and sometimes maybe a little ahead of him. And then he'll let you know too when you don't get it where you need to <laughs> to get it. He'll slump the shoulders, point. Okay, here, not over here, here. Cut by Rosario and he fouled it. And, and right there, let them know that's it. That's that's what I'm looking for. You know, you, you love when a catcher does that because it lets you know that he cares as much as you do. And you know, I would think, and you would know better than uh, anyone in this booth, how important that is to eliminate the hitter. It's the pitcher and the catcher involved in this activity. You get it to where I need it to be. We're we're good. <laughs> yeah. Cut out the middleman. Yep. Rosario out front. But it's true. Two two. I mean, both of these guys are well versed on the game plan. They know what they want to do to attack this certain hitter. But now it comes down to execute the pitch. So if I'm thinking about the hitter while I'm trying to execute a pitch, I'm clouding my mind again. Just, you know what? Here, I'm calling the pitch. We agreed on it. I want it here. Throw it here. We're good. Yeah, and it's you and me. And, and you just simplify everything. Simple is better. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you. I'll tell you about last night, and you're right. <laughs> 2-2 two, two and a foul out of play. I tell you, on the yeah. plane, but yeah, yeah, simple is always better. Yeah, across the board, on the field, off the field, in the booth, out of the booth, <laughs> everywhere, it's way better. Morrison on deck, a 2-2 two, two count to Rosario. Top of the first, just underway. Yanni Chirinos officially in the rotation now. Fly ball right field. Gomez is there waiting. He's got it. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Rays coming in to hit with Denard Span due to lead it off.
Chapman to hit in the bottom of the first inning. Rest of the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers, Span, Crone, and Gomez with Miller, Robertson, and Wendell down the middle. Sucre, Smith, and Echeverria notice that that lineup very similar to the first two in this series, except Sucre is in the spot vacated by the catcher Ramos. 18 runs at the first two ball games. I'd probably keep it the same too. <laughs> uh, how about for Phil Hughes, a scouting report taking the mound this afternoon. Long road back. This is his first start since mid-July of last year. Had that surgery for thoracic outlet syndrome and actually really since 2014 has not had a full season uh, because of injury issues elite strike thrower this guy 2014 and Dwayne we talked about this before the game this bump foul 209 and two thirds innings he walks 16 yep, he comes amazing. out and yep. pounds the zone as well as anybody in the game now what that makes you think is that this raised lineup may look to be aggressive early because they know that that's his game plan yeah. so we'll see you're right about that and you know that that worked uh, for him when he was healthy and he had a little run of success he's had a couple issues with that thoracic uh, outlet syndrome and when he was struggling because he's always around the plate hitters were after him early mm -hmm. and when you look at his numbers from a year ago first pitch I mean they really handed it to him. This pitch is upstairs. Now it's two and one. Well, well the stuff is not elite. You know he's got to be fine with his command but if you don't have elite stuff and yet you're going to be in the zone as much as he is you're going to invite aggressive early in the count swing. There's no question. And in that roughly a half season he had last year they hit 565 off him on the first pitch of at bats. So they were after him fast and furiously. And were pretty effective. Yep. Full count now. Denard Span, 259, starts the day actually fifth in the American League and runs batted in with 17. Fouled away. This man with eight career at bats against Hughes, two out of eight against him. CJ Crone up in the number two spot again. He's on deck. And ball four. Ray get a base runner to start this one. I, I've learned uh, I, I've learned here in the early going to this season that all I need to do to get a walk is talk about how the guy on the mound doesn't walk anybody. Of course. And then yeah. it, it's immediate. Last two times. Yep. Well, there you are. Take him any way you can get it. Spans aboard. CJ Crone who's coming off two home runs. And last night's game of pair of two run homers four on the year now starting to stop by span off first base and ball one to crone that's the first one last night came on an 0 2 pitch in the third inning of the game this measure another one in the seventh yeah and right into where he likes it hit those two home runs about eight feet apart. It's a ball and a strike. Oh look at that return return engagement. Yep. And ready again. And there's a shot high and deep and way gone. Home run for CJ Crow. Long blast, another two run shot. And the Rays are out in front. Number five for Crow. If you keep going middle down to middle in, 
he's going to continue to do that. I, I, I don't know. You know, of course, yesterday it was on the off-speed pitches, but he likes that ball down to down and in. He can drop the barrel and get extension. And here it is. This one's going to be a fastball, but look at the location. Right, I mean, that's right. Right, look at where the, that's the perfect swing. It's where he likes it. He liked that one, the fastball, even more than the changeup. He really got into that one. I was, oh. <laughs> Just talking about the fact that I think that the stuff of Phil Hughes sets up well for C.J. Crone. Yep. Well, because he likes, that's where he likes to work. Point made. Point taken. And Crone takes him out. You know, where C.J. Crone, and you see guys pitching him in, you either have to have elite sync to be able to run it from the inside corner to in off the plate, get him to swing over top of it, or you have to tack his hands. You have to come at his hands. Oh, look out. Gomez takes that pitch up and in. The helmet went flying. I don't know how that one missed him as he tried to stay in there and got out of the way at the last moment. And I'm not sure how this ball just takes off up and in. How did that? Oh, man. I mean, barely. One extra size up on that jersey. Pops it into right. Grossman is there making the catch. And Gomez is out of there. First out. Ray's jumping to the early lead. Now Brad Miller. And nine starts a year ago. And Five relief appearances for Hughes before his season ended. It's a strike to Miller. Hughes made a couple starts for Fort Myers. A couple of five inning starts inside one and one. One of those starts against. The Rays A affiliate, the Charlotte Stone Crabs. One and two now. Strikes. Hughes had an oblique strain that set him back. Daniel Robertson on deck. Full count. Up and foul back. Paul Molitor, the manager of this Minnesota Twins ball club, fourth season, coming off last year's run of 85 and 77. Miller draws a walk on a pitch away. No base runner. At first base with one out, two runs already in. I think those numbers, Dwayne, that you brought up earlier, Phil Hughes is well aware of. Not attacking the zone like we've seen him do in the past, trying to nibble around the edges. It's already cost him two walks. Now Daniel Robertson. Robertson got into one last night in the eighth inning. Turned a fastball around to center field. Registered at 431 feet. And he 
takes a fastball for a strike. Early lead for the Rays. Yanni Chirinos against Phil Hughes. Pitching matchup. One and one. Let's take a look at Robertson's home run last night. He's shown great power in both his home runs. A beautiful extension on that swing and obviously lift off the batter's eye out there in dead central. Back into the screen. Ray start the day running fourth in the AL East. They won three in a row. The Twins half game back in the AL Central. Liner into center. That's going to drop for a base hit. Miller will stop at second. Walk and now a base hit. Two men on with one out. Daniel Robertson staying with that up the middle type approach. He gets a breaking ball that hangs. He stays back on it and just laces it out into center field. Putting another inning together. Another walk, base hit, move the runners. And an early visit here for Hughes, who's still trying to settle in. That breaking ball, not as much break on that as he normally would like. And, and his command has not been what he would like. And, and maybe that's why he's nibbling early. He knows coming out of the bullpen, my stuff isn't there. I don't feel comfortable with it. I know teams are looking to attack me in, in the count early, so I'm going to try to entice him with pitches that are just there. What that makes for is a defensive approach and it's tough to pitch like that. Then you end up trying to have to come over the plate when you're down to and oh as opposed to, to first pitch. Now there's no drama. Joey Wendell. And he looks at a fastball on the inside part of the plate. And after that visit we start to get some action. In the bullpen. Down the left field line. Seen Hildenberger up, Trevor Hildenberger in all three games, and he's throwing in the bullpen down the left field line now. That had a little bite to it there, and Wendell is behind in the count. So, a couple of pitches better from the Minnesota perspective here on the first two to Wendell. So far, so good on the visit by Garvin Halston. And right down in there again for strike three. We talked about it in, in last night's game. That's the pitch that Joey Wendell forces you to execute. But we see a lot of guys trying to go down and in on him with the breaking ball. Got it for strike two, comes with it right here. Not able to lay off of it. And with that kind of depth, not able to get to it either. Tough pitch. You see the way he holds that with that knuckle up, that breaking ball. And he threw a couple pretty good ones there to Wendell. Now it's Jose Sucre. The pitch is a strike. Jesus Sucre. Five for 20 on the year. A couple of runs batted in. Robertson first, Miller second. Big cut and a miss. He goes after the fastball, and here the last couple of hitters, Hughes has become much more aggressive than he was to the hitters to start this inning. Garvin might have gone out there and said, D "Do you see we have Hildenberger up again?" <laughs> so they're they're not kidding around. Let's let's lock it in. Foul back. 
Well, sometimes it's a suggestion. Sometimes it's a challenge. Yeah, and but he's different now. He's it, definitely different. The last six pitches, uh, all strikes, all aggressive strikes, and much more crisp than anything that he threw early on. No question about it. That's where a pitching coach has to know what buttons to push on his pitchers. That's where the challenge lies because you're dealing with so many different personality types. Some guys you've got to massage through a situation like this. Other guys you got to go up there and get in their grill and challenge them, like you said. I think that's the toughest part. You know, you understand the mechanics of things and be able to see things, but you've got to be able to interact with these guys and connect with them. A one two count to Jesus Sucre. Little tapper, a foul ball. That ball just foul as it approached the bag and fielded by Escobar. Rays have two runs in on the CJ Crone home run. One out later, Miller walked. Robertson singled. That prompted a visit by Garvin Alston, the pitching coach, and since then, three pitch strikeout of Wendell and Sucre behind in the count one and two. He lines it into right, a base hit. Charged by Grossman. Miller is going to turn third and stop. And now he is hurt, rounding the bag and cannot move. That not a good sign for Brad Miller. He rounded third and was caught. Take a look here. Well, it's been a challenge for him to stay healthy. Ray settled for two. A left groin strain that put him on the sideline and coming around the bag. We we're thinking maybe he turned an ankle. You see that left angle kind of it's just so tough to tell because he's had yeah. so so many leg issues and you can see the, the wince as he's throwing trying to gut this thing out whatever it may be. So he's still in there for the time being Logan Morrison leads off the second. Takes a pitch away. So the Rays settled for two runs in the first inning. Sucre's base hit. In the bottom of the first sent Miller around third and he put on the brakes and down he went. Upstairs. Two and oh. So you really get the feeling that Miller's out there 
hoping for the best. The first time that he has to make a quick twitch movement, you'll find out. Morris and Lofts hit the other way out of play. So it's two and one. The Morrison starts the day hitting 083. He homered in his first at bat of the series on Friday. Went one for four and then did not play in last night's game. Did he go? He did not. Now it's three and one. Morrison has the lowest batting average in the major leagues among qualifying players at this stage. Got a notch three point one plate appearances as an average to qualify. The double to go with that home run. Now strike and it's three and two. Lowest in average. Slugging percentage went up a little, still the lowest in the majors. That yeah, was an interesting winner for a lot of free agents, Logan Morrison being one of them. I, I'm sure that he thought he was going to cash in after hitting 38 bombs a year ago here with the Rays. But the market never really materialized. Skies it into center. Alex Smith waiting for this one and puts it away. So Chirinos comes back to get him. Well, you know what? Here's our Toyota inside look, Dwayne, and it goes back to what we're talking about with Sucre. You just kind of tell Chirinos, look, hey, get it here, not, not over here. And this is what he does, the way that he nurses a pitcher through, and it's very demonstrative on what he wants out of him. Now he's telling them right here, yeah, there you go. And guess what? The communication does not end. Here's they're walking off the field. That's a great shot. Two guys invested in having a good out pitcher catcher and that relationship. Uh, Escobar. I had, I had visions of, of myself and Tim Laker. There you are. Walking yes, off the field. yes. Just like that. Yeah. Two minds united into one. Yeah. This is a scary thing, but it worked well on the field. Mind meld. Oh, there's a shot off Escobar's bat, and that ball is going to get right out of here. A liner into the seats in right center field. Well, Escobar hit that ball on a line, and now it's two to one. The second home run of the year. Well, enough recognition there by Escobar on the split. You see it right there. Doesn't have the same dive. It's starting to go, but he's able to get down and into it. That wasn't as quick of a dive as we've seen from that pitch. Well, like the one we saw, the, the version that we saw in Boston. It just would disappear on you. That one was kind of tumbling in there, and good pitch recognition by the twin third baseman. Now Max Kepler looks at a strike. Did the other way out of play. And Chirinos gave up a home run in his start against Texas. He's allowed two now. Shinsu Chu hit one out. Escobar today. Ground ball. And there's Wendell. Rays had the shift on with Echeverria in short right field, and Wendell over from second takes care of Kepler. Two away. Shortstop, number 16, Adrianza. Adrianza, the shortstop up here. Hitting 250 with a run batted in. And a strike. The 
You see Echevarria out there in that shallow right field. A little bit of a change from the shift from a year ago. And now an 0-2 count. If you figure that's where gonna, the, the most action is going to be, and by the way, when you play a guy deeper like that, that allows him more range. So you take your best fielder, the guy with the most range, and you put him where he can benefit you the most, and that's why he's out there. I just still love if you pound one out to him right now, you throw it in the book as a 6-3. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this box score in, in a <laughs> couple of years down the road. That was a ground ball, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was to the short stop. <laughs> Ground ball to second. You know, and with a two strike count, the Rays then move Robertson way off like a shortstop who's pulling a hitter. Well, you at this point, you're not afraid of the bunt. Yep. You're begging him to bunt as you take Robertson, put him there, and leave him all this room down the line. But you're not worried about him putting one down now. He does that, well, good for him, I guess. Two, two to Adrianza. It's going to be foul beyond the bullpen. Shank back out to Gomez. The souvenir. That makes a good day. Yes, it does. All the games that I went to, Dwayne, never came close. That one came back. A strike call on the fastball. Catching the zone. A run on the homer. It's two to one raise. Mobile and Dwayne, how about last night out in Oakland? Sean Minaya, a 2 0 change up there to Hanley Ramirez to get the force out at second base. And this is what makes baseball so amazingly awesome. You have a team, the, the Boston Red Sox, that are just on an absolute roll, the highest scoring team in Major League Baseball. And Sean Minaya goes out there and no hits him. You saw his line 10 punch outs. How about that? Wow. You know, here, the Red Sox are 17 to 2. They score more runs than anybody. Yeah. In the major leagues, and not only that, but hitting the ball hard all the time. Down to third with this ground ball from Alex Smith. And he is out a couple of pitches into the Rays' half of the second. Yeah, they were leading the major leagues and runs scored. And Manaya shot him right down. Remarkable. You just never know in this game. And that's why you've got to bring it every single day. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday. To Danny Echevarria.
I was trying to explain that concept to my son last night uh, on the drive home. I said, listen, they, they got run ruled in a tournament <laughs> to end their day yesterday. And I said, listen, we, uh, the Rays just got done run ruling the Twins. Yep. And so the Twins have to come back tomorrow ready to, ready to play. Same with you guys. Yep. It's a new day. Wake up, sun comes up, let's go play some ball. Well, you know, at the major league level, you're playing almost every day, so you have to be ready. And that's the mindset. Just come right back. And that's the tough part of it, too, especially if things aren't going well for you as a team or you as an individual. You've got to find a way to try to, to make things work, and sometimes fighting your mind is the, is the biggest battle. Chavaria bounces it back. And the liner into right. Grossman backs up and makes the catch. Two gone. Two up, two down. Here's Denard Span. A ball, no strikes. Back into the screen. One and one. Two and one now. Span walk to start the race first and scored on the CJ Crone home run. And now he is up three and one. You know, after that visit from the pitching coach. Garvin Austin went out there. Hughes immediately was ahead of the next four hitters he faced. Now behind Span, and he's going to get him on a fly ball here. It's caught out there by Rosario. Three up, three down, go the Rays, and we head into the third. Two to one, Tampa Bay.
It's another play ball kid Sunday. I'm joined by Will Order, who's the head coach of the Spring Hill Dixie League. And it's one of the biggest leagues around here in the Tampa Bay region. You're bringing a big crew here today. Yes, absolutely. Um, I got a, it's a big league. And we're actually the largest league in the state of Florida. And um, I'll tell you what, we got a bunch of talented kids, and I can't wait for the future hall for them. I know the Rays have been involved with their T-ball league, and you guys have gotten involved. You're the head coach of the uh, eight, nine-year-old Brewers I see you're representing today. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I got a, a good bunch. Um, the kids are amazing. Like I said, I can't wait for the future hall for them. Well, uh, anybody wants to come out uh, in the Little League on a play ball kid Sunday, a day like today is always special. And I know you guys are psyched, right? Yeah! Well, they're, they're representing the Brewers, but obviously Dwayne and B.A., they're rooting for the Rays. Absolutely. Had a little Durham Bull in the middle of all that as well. Had a good time here. There you are. He's just waiting to be called to the big leagues. There he is. Oh. oh. Got the lock out of there, Mike. Listen, I want to go back to the pictures. There was a, there was a big right hand yeah. coming downhill at you. And it looked like he was playing on a field that dead center was about a buck twenty. <laughs> I mean, he must be a pop. Look at this. I mean, look, look at that. I mean, the center fielder is playing. It, it, that's a, like the second baseman in a shift. <laughs> and he's just coming downhill. That I mean, he's bringing some heat right yeah, there. You know that. Right. But what, what kind of field is that? It's small. <laughs> no wonder everybody's about launch angle now. Everybody hits home runs. <laughs> Went too high. Except off two that two. dude. Yeah, yeah. He's like, go ahead yeah. and try to lift this. Yeah. yeah. Looked like he was yeah, he, he 15 playing business. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pitch, first thing pitchers notice short fence. Yeah, yeah. come on, make yeah. it fair. Hey, if I can turn around and shake hands with my center fielder, we've got an issue. <laughs> it's gonna not go well for me. There's a cut in the mess. That one disappeared on Jason Castro. Strikeout number three. For Chirinos. What a way here, and we go to the top of the order, Brian Dozier. Here takes a strike. Popped out to Echeverria in the first. One run ball game. Torino's touch for the Escobar home run in the second. And that's a strike around the knees. And some low heat right there. You know what? You you notice Phil Hughes the way that he kind of clicked it in when Garvin Alston came out for that visit. Well, after the home run by Escobar, Yanni Chirinos' velocity has popped way up. He's seeing the 94s and 95s now with regularity. A bit of that on a foul. Sometimes that all that's all it takes. You know, early on you're trying to feel for the strike zone, and, and then all of a sudden the guy gets into one, and you're like, okay, it's on. Yep. You, you're not doing that to me anymore, and the competitive juices kick in and you just go into here I come at you mode. Yeah that's that extra level you know I mean you, you're out there you're competing 100 percent if something like that happens you got a little bit more. I want to bury him. That's a hot shot past Echeverria diving to his left and Dozier continues that hitting streak 16 to start the year and 23 dating back into last year. Well, so consistent. And he hits the ball hard. You can tell by that contact. That is loud for a reason. I mean, this guy right now is locked in. And you're hitting it hard enough to get it by Echeverria on a dive. So he extends the hitting streak at first now with one out. And here is Joe Maurer. Ball, no strikes. 
he wants that sinker down and away and Joe Maurer to hit a ground ball right to Echeverria. Echeverria is shading up the middle. You know Maurer likes to use the middle of the field in the other way. Love to hit a ground ball right there. In double play. 2-0. That's the idea. Took a shot anyway. again out there. Yeah. I mean that's that's what you're trying to do. You know Joe Maurer's approach. You've got a good sinker. It sets up well if you can get it to that spot. Up the zone there. A nice right job. Right out there, huh? How yeah. about that pitch? Great location, but a good job by Sucre, too, to stick it right there at that corner. Just the way this ball is received. Heading out of the zone. That's tremendous. Going to be over, but low. Three and one. Torino stays down there. Grossman on deck. He's going to try to keep this one in. You can see how little movement for Sucre back there and what he's trying to do. Just missed. That, that right there was the no secrets at bat. Everybody in the stadium, including Torino, Mauer, anybody watching, it was just one sinker after another. And Joe Mauer patient enough to take this one just off the plate, trying to get him to hit that ground ball right to Echeverria. How many hitters, three and one, take that pitch? The ones with tremendous strike zone <laughs> discipline. Yeah, I mean that's that's it. A especially when you're talking about you know top of the order type guys. Joe Maurer, he's you know hitting in the two hole, but he's more further down the way you you think of. But his you know his approach is that of almost a leadoff hitter. As big as he is, you think the power numbers would be there. That's just not the way that he goes about his business. Strike on Grossman. Grossman swung and missed and a sinker moving away from him and struck out in the first. And now he takes a strike and that one close to the same location that Mauer took ball for. Strike for Grossman 0 2. with it one ball two strikes a couple of walks he's walked Maurer twice Dozier the runner at second picking up the second hit allowed by Torino's One two. Let's foul back. Twenty eight year old outfielder, Robbie Grossman. Big strikeout for out number two. Go 
both outs coming on the strikeout here in the inning. And nothing fancy at all about this. This is just going to be the, a sinker. Starts it out over the middle of the plate, breaks it to the edge, and again finds himself underneath that pitch on the swing. Now the first at bat, there were two pitches off the plate. That one stays on, but you could still see the angle of the swing underneath it. Not able to figure that pitch out yet. Eddie Rosario. And a strike starts him with a fastball in the upper part of the zone. Did you see how surprised Rosario was on that pitch? Because this whole team has zeroed in on bottom half of the zone. All of a sudden you get a pitch up and you flinch like you're not looking for it up there. Pitch off the plate wide one and one. Rosario tends to be aggressive up there. It's improved a bit since he first surfaced at the major league level but. Like a lot of hitters, he'd prefer to swing the bat than take pitches. Counts one and two now. Well, he's in that position too, you know, hitting cleanup today. Run producer. Here we go. Two men on, two men out, and the one two to Rosario. My ball short right that's going to fall for a base hit. Gomez with the pickup throw is going to be cut off. The tying run scores. Rosario dropped it in front of Gomez to chase home Dozier. Well, another fastball. They were trying to go up and away. That ends up up and in, but. Rosario is able to get to it and just that soft he just dropped it got it over the head of Echeverria and dropped it right in front of Gomez and that's a big one because that ties this thing up. Mauer advancing to second. Two men on for Logan Morrison with two outs. Ground ball headed to second. Wendell's going to make the play, and that retires the side. A run scores. A couple men left. We're tied when we go to the bottom of the third. C.J. Crone will lead it off.
2 2 ball game onto the bottom of the third inning as CJ Crone leads it off. Well, since 2017, uh, where his home runs are being hit, and by the way, these three right here, all three of those have come here in 2018. We see that middle of the plate, middle down to middle down and in. That's where he's dangerous, and he's seen a couple of changeups and a fastball in those zones in this series, and all of them have become souvenirs. Yeah, hit the fastball out in the first inning of this game. Which is away. It's one and one. Where he's facing Phil Hughes. They jumped out in front with the Crone home run, but the Twins have answered with a run in the second and another run in the third. This one is skied toward left center a little bit. Dozier out there, and he's going to make the catch. Second baseman. Started toward the middle of the infield and got out there into shallow center for that one. Yeah, and that ball almost leaked back into the hot zone. They're trying to go in. Remember, we said if you're going to come in, you got to come at his hands. And that's fine and dandy, but you got to get it in there. That one was in the danger zone. Fortunate just to pop up. Here's Carlos Gomez. Fly ball in the first was to right shortens on the bat takes a breaking ball strike one. Stays up one and one. Two and one here to Gomez. News will be 32 at the end of June. Four and three last year and one and seven the year before. His earned run average the last couple of years pushing six. That's a strike two two. Jurassic outlet syndrome has been an issue affecting him in both those seasons. Trying to come back. Count is full right now. Three two pitch. Gomez misses it. Out on strikes. Second strikeout of the day for Hughes. Well, Hughes able to get him with a cut fastball. They want that ball away. It ends up middle in. Enough movement on that pitch to get it by Gomez for the second out. Well, Brad Miller, who stayed in the game after rounding third in the first inning, and Something in there that prevented him from getting back to the bag. A little groin strain issue. Recently back off the DL. Drives this one into left center field. It'll be caught by Kepler. And the Raids are up and down. One, two, three. We head into the fourth inning, tied 2-2.
Jersey hanging there as the uh, Rays are mindful of uh, Danny Farquhar's situation. And of course, that's uh, Brad Miller with uh, Fark written on his cap, suffering with the White Sox, the uh, aneurysm, brain hemorrhage. Escobar taking a big cut to miss strike one. I guess uh, all our uh, concerns and certainly well wishes to uh, Danny Farquhar and his family. I guess the uh, the encouraging side of that is once it occurred and he received immediate attention from the EMTs. But when he left with the EMTs he was conscious which was a, a good sign. And so the Rays sending their best wishes in his direction. It's sobering. Yes, you it know, is. Major League Baseball and, and people that are involved in this game and love this game, it's such a, a fraternity. You know, these are uh, former teammates. I know when we got the news, it just kind of just it stops you in place. Mm -hmm. So we wish him and his family the very best and uh, looking for a speedy and complete recovery. It's Smith in center field taking care of the fly ball off the bat of Escobar. Max Kepler. Kepler out second to first Wendell who shaded a bit toward the middle of the field with Kepler up there and the Rays putting the shift on Echeverria in short right field that's a strike Wendell handled the ground ball from Kepler in the second. Popper left side Robertson's after it quickly to the stands but he runs out of room. O two. Johnny Chirinos on the hill for the Rays gave up the home run to Escobar in the second and RBI base hit to uh, Rosario in the third. Raised two runs, came on the CJ Crone home run in the first inning. One and two. Balls, two strikes. Harry Adrianza is on deck. Have a play the other way. will be headed to Baltimore to start the next road trip. Tomorrow will be a day off. The Orioles are home against the Indians right now. And strike three called Kepler caught looking. And the second out of the inning fifth strikeout for Chirinos. Boy everything away from these left handed hitters for the most part. So you get them looking out there. And then you lock him up. That is just a well executed front door sinker. And Max Kepler just unable to pull the trigger. Now 
Now the Minnesota shortstop with the bases empty and two gone. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be interesting. Day off. Wondered why we had a day off. Didn't re realize that the Indians were up there playing the old reach around series. <laughs> well, we're in the middle of a doozy right now. We have to have a chance to go do some uh, scouting tomorrow. Well, that's what we're being encouraged. Yeah. KP, our, our producer, is encouraging me in my ear right now to uh, to go see Kevin Gosman tomorrow night. Do some research on the Orioles. I instead will probably be watching playoff hockey. <laughs> Good chance. I'll leave the research to you and Tuesday morning. Fly ball into left center field. Denard Span moving over there, and as he hits the track, he makes the catch. Fine running grab by Denard Span. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 2 2. Manny Machado. Corey Kluber v Manny Machado. Manny Machado has gotten him twice. There's the home run number one, and now try the breaking ball, the curveball from Kluber, and he pops that out. Gets him on the fastball, gets him on the breaking ball. Right now, it's the Orioles lead this ball game three to two, but our old friend Rajay Davis on second base with nobody out for the Indians in the top of whatever inning that set. Yeah, the Indians using some of their depth. With, oh, look at the. Bat toss again. You know what I think we have in Daniel Robertson. We have a guy who can challenge Kelly shopping because we've seen this now a couple of serious bat tosses before and now this. Well earlier in this homestand against Texas you remember Robertson Chirinos threw on a helmet. They tried to put one on Bartolo Colon but he's like my head is a helmet. <laughs> But you're right. That's at least three. He had two and one at bat. Tremendous distance. But um, again, the grip stick, the pine tar. It works. It's your way now. One and one to count. Yeah, they've got Rajay Davis in uh, in the lineup now. The Indians. Bradley Zimmer had had a, had an issue, so Davis fills in for him and. A quality high energy backup. Yep. Well, you got to have depth. They do. So if you want to make a run, you know, you want to make a run. Baseball is 162 games, and you're not going to start a season with a 25 man roster and finish with that same roster intact. You're going to need some reserves from time to time, and it's good to have depth. You're right. Close. That pitch is wide. Three and two. Is Kelly Shop exciting in the booth? Yeah, good old number ten. <laughs> Wonder if Johnny Field 
realizes how fortunate he is to share that number with Kelly Shopping. Ground ball, base hit into left, and Robertson is aboard. He is two for two. The Rays have a runner aboard to start the bottom of the fourth. Robertson continues to swing a good bat here for the Rays. Pop that ball through. Anytime you can get that leadoff man on, nobody out. Joey Wendell. Move to first. Rajay Davis Dwayne comes all the way around to score. Tie ball game. There you go. Yep. yep. Not surprised. Cut low foul ball right there. Ray's got some action going in their bullpen. You know, Chirino's officially in the starting rotation. Yobro, the lefty up down the right field line. And he's been. Speaking of Torino's with the pitch count up to a time when if he had to go 100 pitches, he could. He's a little over 70 right now. That's a strike to Wendell, and he's down in the count, 0 2. That's a base hit, punch through the left side. Robertson advances to second. So Robertson and Wendell aboard here to start the bottom of the fourth inning. Boy, looking to answer. And Joey Wendell, a nice job here, a breaking ball that stays middle away, let it travel into the zone, let it get deep, and then pop it through. And Joey Wendell was swinging a hot stick on that last road trip. It was a lot of stuff like this where you get hitters hitting the ball the other way and they become tough to pitch to. Turn on the ball that's middle in shoot the ball that's away the other way. Well another mound visit about to take place here Garvin Alston was very effective when he went out there earlier. Now with two men on nobody out he's going to make that trek again. We'll remind you to get in on the action with exclusive on field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. You know, the group in the private party area just steps from the raised bullpen. Reserve the Papa John's bullpen box by contacting group sales. The number is 888-FAN-RAISE or emailing sales at raisebaseball.com. Brian Presley, hard-throwing right-hander now up in the bullpen. Sucre tries to bunt, bunts through it, strike one. Swinging away this time, and he fouls it back, puts Sucre down 0 2. And how about Adrianza had snuck in behind Daniel Robertson, and Phil Hughes instead went to the plate. The entire left side was wide open for Jesus Sucre. Watch this. Here comes Adrianza. Here we come. Nope. Oops. That left side completely open. One hopper. Oh, man. Short stop now out at second, and that's the only one they're going to get. A little indecision as the bobble broke up everything out there. Robertson goes to third. 
Sucre's aboard on what turns out to be a fielder's choice. And it could have been a triple play. Yes, it could. I mean, it, it was such a low scoop that everybody had frozen. I mean, if he gets it clean, goes right to third, or even tags, steps on second, and throws the first, or flips. They had an opportunity because everybody was stuck in cement, but he couldn't find the baseball. And you know, I wonder if Adrianza was out there thinking about that for a moment. Well, he's just going to try to go to second, and then the juggle act begins. Yep. So they get one, and that's going to be it for Hughes. With Robertson, who was headed back to second, and then advanced to third on the bobble. So it's first and third, one out, and a new pitcher. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Options, and that's why the Florida Lottery has over 70 unique scratch off games. So add a little play to your day with these new games. The Florida Lottery, it's your ticket. Claim it. Must be 18 or older to play. Play responsibly. Hughes out after three and a third, allowing five hits, two runs, responsible for two men on. Struck out two and walked two. 70 pitches, including a home run pitch. To CJ Crone to account for the two runs in the first. Now Ryan Presley is on. Well, power stuff. We've already seen him in this series. Power fastball, power breaking ball. And you see the shorten by Smith on the bat there. Pitch down and in, and Robertson staying put down at third. That's that bun play. One out, runners on first and third. If you're able to execute it and get the bunt down, almost impossible to get the runner trying to score. He's going to show it again, and the bunt is fouled up the right side. Yeah, you keep that fair, and there's no chance at the plate, but it's a foul ball, and the count is one and one. I think we've seen that play thwarted twice. In all the years that it's been run, and, and both times it was a pitcher getting off the mound, a scoop with the glove and a shovel yep. to home plate, and a bang bang play. That's yep. what it's going to take. You got to bunt it firmly back to the pitcher, and he's got to almost, like I said, scoop and shovel right on the money. Don't have time to pull the ball out and make a throw. So showing it again and takes the pitch for a ball. So it's two and one. Deck circle. Two and two. The Rays had their first scoring opportunity since the first inning. They had three hits and a couple walks. Got two runs on the Crone home run. A 
low and it's covered up by Castro. Three balls, two strikes. Ryan Presley, who pitched an inning Friday, goes to first, but nothing much doing over there. Gave up a hit and a walk, picked up a couple strikeouts in his outing. Alex Smith is out on strikes. Big strikeout for Presley. That's what he needed right there. That's why Malik snapped his bat. He realized that's a a huge point in this game, a chance to take the lead, and a nasty hook. Well, you see the depth on that a hard slider, and Malik's none too happy. You completely understand. Uh, to Danny Echeverria. A strike. Upstairs. One and one. Cutting a miss on the curveball there. Well, Echeverria, you want to get that curveball you know, up in the zone. You, any breaking ball, you can get it up, see it up. This one just a little too far up, but the right idea. That's when you want to take that big swing and think about driving that baseball. Swing and a miss on the mid 90s fastball. So a couple strikeouts there and we go to the fifth inning 2-2 Two -two tie. Serving overseas 
are watching this game on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome those of you in countries around the world aboard naval ships at sea and thank you and salute you for your service. Wish you a speedy trip back home. We go to the fifth. Tied 2-2. Two -two. Jason Castro about to begin the inning with Yanni Chirinos on the hill. Dozier and Maurer will follow Castro. Which is a strike. Two now on Castro. The Rays continue to have Ryan Yarbrough busy in the bullpen up the right field line. And a cut and a miss. Three pitches, one away. Sixth strikeout of the game for Chirinos. Number two, Ryan Dozier. We get Dozier to the plate. Well, Dozier singled in the third inning. Wound up scoring the tying run driven home by Eddie Rosario. A ball, no strikes. One lifted foul back, going to be out of play, and it's one and one. And with Brian Dozier, those eyes started to bug out of his head. He saw that off speed delivery stay in the middle of the plate, and what did he take? A big swing. There's the split, kind of hangs in there, and boy, does he take a rip just a hair early. And a pop fly center. Here comes Smith. He's going to be there. Malik takes care of Dozier. Had to cover a little ground, but got there. No problem. Two up and two down. Joe Maurer will hit. A couple of quick outs here. In the fifth inning, 79 pitches on the day for Torino's. Power takes it down and in. And here in this part of the order, the Twins have a run of. Left handed hitters, Bauer, the lefty, Grossman, the switch hitter, Rosario, Morrison, lefty, Escobar, switch hitter. Now 2 0 to Bauer. The Rays with Yarborough, the lefty, in the bullpen. One. 
Ground ball by the mound. That's going to skip into center field. Two out single, and Maurer is on for the third time today. A couple of walks and a base hit. Grossman is due up. Kevin Cash pops out of the dugout. And this is you know this is interesting too because Yanni Chirinos has owned Robbie Grossman today. Punched him out twice on sinkers and yet will not face him a third time. So pitching change brought to you by the Florida Lottery. By your Southern Chevy dealers and by your local Ford dealers. Rays in the middle of a pitching change in the fifth inning. Ball game tied 2-2. Two, -two. two outs with a runner on. Chirinos leaves after 83 pitches. He'll give way to the lefty. Ryan Yarborough turning Grossman around to hit right-handed. And the pitch is a strike. Grossman against Chirinos. Had struck out twice, swinging both times. And now, as a switch hitter, batting right handed against Yarborough. And not looking at all comfortable going after Torino's sinker. Fly ball into right. Gomez is there to make the catch. That leaves Maurer at first, and we go to the bottom of the fifth, tied 2 2.
ladies there rooting for the Rays. Kids on May 5th, the Rays are hosting a youth baseball clinic as part of Play Ball Weekend. The clinic features youth baseball and softball games, entertainers, and kids 14 and under will receive a free Play Ball Weekend bag. For more info, visit RaysBaseball.com slash Play Ball. Top of the order for the Rays in the bottom of the fifth. Here's Denard Span fouling one. Strike one. Span Crone and Gomez do up. Phil Hughes started work three and a third. Ryan Presley came on to get the final two outs in the fourth. That's a strike 0 2 94 on the fastball. More action in the Minnesota bullpen. Left hander Taylor Rogers is up. Well, mix and match all the way down the rest of this ball game, battle of the bullpens. Got half the game to go, so. One and two. So Chirinos, 83 pitches, four and two thirds, two runs, four hits. Hughes worked three and a third for Minnesota, a couple runs, five hits. Now Presley. Span is called out on strikes. Fastball in, caught him looking. Yeah, there wasn't much that Arm was going to be able to do with that pitch. A, a great one by Presley, top of the zone. You, you fire at it, you're probably going to swing through it. You see him check his swing and ends up getting called anyway. That was just a perfect pitch in a perfect spot. Now C.J. Crone. One for two. It's a ball. Cut and a foul ball deflecting off Castro. Well, the Rays got off to a promising start. Couple runs in the first when Crone homered after Span had walked to begin the Rays offense today. There's a swing and a miss. Fastball up. One and two. Well, he's another one of those guys that smartly will use that fastball up. Also, the curveball played off of that down below the zone. And he's got good stuff. Well, that's why Paul Molitor went to him, you know, first and third, one out. You need strikeouts, you need dominating pitches. Lifted into center field. It's Kepler. Gone. But they're testing CJ Crone. He's burned him a couple of times, and that fastball, while he beat him with it up in the zone the previous pitch, that one is middle of the plate down. And we know that he can jump into those pitches from time to time. Well, now it's Carlos Gomez. Strike one. Gomez 0 for 2. Had a fly ball to right and struck out. <laughs> Nothing in two. He's faced four men, racking up three strikeouts. 
with two strikeouts in an inning Friday. And he strikes out Gomez who breaks his bat across his knee in frustration and we're going to go to the sixth inning with the Rays. And the Twins tied 2-2. The Rays down one bat. We are now home run in the first by C.J. Crone with Denard Span aboard. Fifth home run of the year for C.J. Crone. Eduardo Escobar answered with a solo shot in the second inning. Eddie Rosario's base hit in the third scored Brian Dozier to tie it. We're 2 2 headed into the sixth inning. Ryan Yarbrough got the last out in the fifth, set to go to work in the sixth. Against Rosario, then Logan Morrison and Eduardo Escobar. It's a strike. Rosario, one for two. Rosario hit the grand slam here in the eighth inning Friday night. That got a, just a piece of that pitch and then a little bit of Sucre on the foul ball. Checking his lower extremities there to see if they're still around. They are. He can feel them. Wondered what condition they might be in. Now he mm. hopped up out of that stance uh, or that crouch pretty quickly. Yeah, catcher to catcher. Yeah, okay, it's your day back there now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's telling him, I'm not coming in. Uh -uh. I'm good right here. You better stay out there. Had a shot down the line into right field. Foul ball. Off that low sidewall. Foul. Boy, and they're, they're very fortunate. You know, Sucre, and we've seen it all game long, showing Ryan Yobra where he wanted that pitch. He wanted it way off the plate, and it stayed middle. Fortunately for the Rays, as Rosario was just a little bit too quick. A couple feet foul. Rosario hit 27 home runs last year. Only two from the left side. Against a lefty, that is. 25 against righties and two against a lefty. Made a bid for an extra base hit. Now the one two, and he pops it foul. And 
Morris in another left handed bat on deck. Foul ball off his foot. Ball rolling down to Miller at first. Carries have their rookie left hander, Yarbrough. They got four and two thirds from Torinos today and making the start. There's a battle going on. Rosario fouls another one away. We're eight pitches into this at bat. Only six year old left hander Yarbrough out there. Stairs. Grew up a Rays fan in Lakeland. Three two Popper Robertson's stalking this one foul territory with a lot of room, and that's the first out. But a big, lengthy battle and they get the lead off man big big win in that lengthy battle Dwayne by Ryan Yarbrough you getting later into the game and, and lead off base runners are to be avoided at all costs took him 10 pitches it'll be Logan Morrison And is hit by a pitch. So Yarborough hits the left handed batter. Morris hit it first. Set up in, and that ball just takes off, catches him right in the thigh. Escobar turning around to hit right handed. He takes a strike. Escobar last year remarkably similar numbers left and right. More advance from the left side but. Overall, Escobar finished last year hitting 254 with 21 home runs. He had 255 against left handed pitching and 253 against right handed pitching. Slugging percentage a little higher from the left side, but all of those numbers pretty close across the board. Average on base, slugging, left or right. Not often that you see that. Yep. You know, one of the guys that comes to mind, Victor Martinez, mm -hmm. and, and his long career has been very consistent against lefties and righties, but usually a guy has a side that he prefers. Pops it up. Echeverria 
Just outside the line, back a third, handles that. Two gone. Yeah, you don't see a guy evenly uh, distributing power. You know, sometimes there'll be a guy a little more power. You know, two different hitters. Yeah, power from one side, maybe more contact, line drive, not as much power from the other side. And he's he's pretty equal lefty or righty. Probably started uh, at a, a very early age. Became very uh, adept at both sides. That's I'll tell you what you talk about versatility. We talk about it all the time with guys in the field. But being versatile at the plate and being a guy that you never have to worry about coming out of a game because of a matchup issue. You want to bring the lefty? I'll just switch around and hit righty. I'm good either way. Yep. And and I'm effective either way. One strike on Kepler on the foul ball. And to left center field cutting across. That ball's off the glove of Malik Smith. Morris is hitting third. They're going to wave him around. He will score without a play on Kepler's double. Malik Smith made a diving effort, got his glove on it, but that was it. And the Twins take a 3 to 2 lead. Morrison, who was hit by the pitch, scores all the way from first on Kepler's double. Well, you got to put a charge into it. It's a fastball, looked to be the four seam variety, and Kepler able to get some good reach and line this ball into the gap. Malik Smith already kind of shaded that way. That close. Well. Kepler now at second base. It's his fourth double of the year. And the shortstop Adrianza lifts a high foul ball back of the bullpen mound. Spans over there to make the catch to retire the side. Twins score one run one hit one left bottom of the six coming three two Minnesota. Geico, great moment on this day in 2000. Jose Canseco hitting a 472 foot home run up the center field catwalk. And then Bubba Trammell coming up with a two run pinch hit walk off home run as the Devil Rays in 2000 defeated the Angels. It was the longest home run in Tropicana Field history at the time and still tied for the fifth longest. Now we go to the bottom of the six. Brad Miller lost the fly ball to left, caught by Rosario, facing the new pitcher Taylor Rogers. One pitch, one out. Yeah. 
Andrew Robertson will bat now against Rogers. Nice job by Presley as Rogers comes on for the eighth time. One and one. Presley faced five men, struck out four of them. Yeah, he had good stuff. The, the fastball was explosive. He worked the breaking ball off of it very well. Boy, on top of that, he came into a tough spot. Runners on first and third, one out. Alex Smith trying to get the bunt down to get yeah. a run home. And couldn't do it. Finally struck out on a slider. Alvarado up in the bullpen. Now Robertson takes it and it's one and one. Out of play, one and two. Third Minnesota pitcher used three and a third, Presley an inning and two thirds. Now Rogers. The count goes out to two and two. Rowe joining Alvarado in the Rays bullpen. The count's going to be full here on Robertson. Robertson two for two for the day. This one will make it three for three. Extra base is coming one hop and to the wall and Robertson is in its second standing with a double. Well, that represents the potential tying run. Now we've seen Robertson hit the ball all over the field here in this series and he gets this sinker that stays up. Nice plate coverage, and he whistles that ball out into the gap. He's so sound at the plate right now. And Man, it's second, one away for Joey Wendell. Wendell had three hits last night, one for two in this game. Pitch sweeps in there for strike one. Right handed action up in the Minnesota bullpen. This one almost got Wendell. One and one. Ball just takes off up and in, just tracks him. Foul right at his feet. One and two. Alan Buznitz up in the bullpen. Down the left field line for the Twins. The Rays continue with the lefty Alvarado and the right hander Rowe. Ground ball, that's headed up the middle. And a base hit. That's going to score Robertson. And boy, a nice job by Wendell right there to tie this game. 3 3. Well, Taylor Rogers comes in, leaves the sinker up to Daniel Robertson, and then trying to put away Wendell. He had him set up for a breaking ball down away. 
Didn't get it down and away. And Joey Wendell credit him for staying on it and staying up the middle. Here's the breaking ball. That slider never gets to the outside corner and stays middle of the plate. And he just smacks it up the middle. All right back to tie it. Sucre moved to first and Wendell is back in. Way. How about the combination of Robertson and Wendell, the five and six hitters for the Rays? Of course, they're five of six in this game. One strike to count on Sucre, who's bouncing out of play. 0 2. Well, you, you, you've got to love watching players like Daniel Roberts and Joey Wendell get opportunities and, and take advantage of it. And since they've been out in the lineups more frequently than maybe they were you know, going to be coming into the season, they are really producing. Yeah, they've been fun to watch. Probably better than to see young players get a chance and catch in. Line drive, there's a base hit by Sucre. Wendell's going to go to third. Throw's going to be way offline. Go to the backstop, and Sucre will wind up at second base. Wendell to third, and Sucre to second. Well, that was Rosario getting over there and uncorking a, what appeared to be a desperation throw that went all the way to the backstop. He had the right idea. There's a chance here this ball gets out to him relatively quickly that he could get Joey Wendell. That's the thought. He just obviously uncorks that throw without ever picking up third base. And those are right between third base and home plate. There's nobody there, and Sucre is going to jog into second base. Well, a base hit and an error allowing Sucre to move up. Wendell's at third, second and third. Now Malik Smith and the Minnesota infield forced to come up. Rays have come back to tie it. Great chance to take the lead. And a take for ball one on Malik Smith. Alex looking for his first hit. Trying to give the Rays the lead. Ooh, a strike called, and that just did catch the corner. Hey, you don't see breaking balls in that part of the strike zone get called too often. Other side called a strike. How do you cover those? <laughs> How do you cover those two pitches? Look at that. A couple of tough calls here on Malik's. Yeah, and Rogers needs a strikeout so badly. Now it's choking up. Upstairs. Two and two, fastball right there. And you would figure you change the eye level with that heater, you come right back with the slower breaking ball and try to get it down and away where he threw the last one. The lefty's 2 2, and a wave and a miss, and he got him to reach on the breaking ball to strike him out. Now Malik Smith quickly found himself in a bad situation there. Got the count even 2 2 and then the breaking ball. Well he did what he thought we would or he thought that he would. He went that fastball up didn't get a chase. You come right back with the breaking ball down and off the plate. 
So two thirds of an inning for Rogers. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Bank draft room exclusively for Ray seats and ticket holders blends hospitality and comfort, offering local craft beers and signature food items. Tropicana Field's premier destination area exclusively for Ray seats and ticket holders. The Republic Bank draft room. Call 888 Fan Rays for information. Alan Busnitz, the new pitcher. In the face of Danny Echeverria with two men in scoring position, and the first pitch is a strike. Echeverria has lined to right and struck out swinging. Ooh, a cut and a miss on a fastball up at 94. Oh, two. Boy, the delivery by Busanets, the way that he starts, there's a little bit of a hop and then he jumps at the hitter. And so that can create some some deception. Fastball, breaking ball, we saw 94, pretty good velocity. He's got the jump here. There's a high fly ball. Back into left. Rosario to the wall. It's gone. Home run by Echeverria. Three run shot. First home run of the year for Adani Echeverria. And the Rays will take the lead. It's a 6 3 ball game. How about that on an 0 2 pitch? It's one thing to get the jump in the count, but you've got to be able to finish. And Buznitz hangs a curveball. And Adani Echeverria, who had gone. Without an extra base hit for the longest of times is starting to rack him up here. That curveball stays right there. Drop the barrel. And enough carry right off the bat. And he knew it. He knew it. Yelling into his dugout. Maria jumped all over that pitch. Ball one to Denard Span. How about that? So Echeverria makes it a 6 3 ball game. There's a ground ball by the mound, headed up the middle, backhanded by Dozier. Quick throw, not going to be in time. Denard Spann has a base hit. He's on for the second time. Nice effort by Dozier, but a tough chance and a base hit for Spann. Well placed. Ryan Dozier's going to be able to get to it, but see how long. It takes him to get to it. Got to go a long way, and there aren't span. The hustle beats it out. Chavaria striking the big blow. 
C.J. Crone. Fast ball up. Crone got the Rays on the board with a homer in the first. Echeverria has given them the lead again with the three run home run in the sixth. Two and one. Cut and a miss. Big swing on that fastball up. Two and two. Three runs charged to Rogers in two thirds of an inning. Hughes started, Presley, Rogers, and now Buznitz. Swing and a miss. Crone out on strikes. So the sixth inning is over, but the Rays have a big one. The big blow, a three run home run by Dani Echevarria. And the Rays have built this 6 3 lead. And the Rays a 6 3 lead to carry into the seventh inning. Yarbrough, the lefty on the hill for the Rays, touched for a run after he hit a batter and gave up a two out double in the sixth. Here in the seventh, he'll face the left handed hitting catcher, Jason Castro. Those here in Mauer to follow. Pitch is a little bit wide. One ball, no strikes. Pitch down. Two and nothing. Castro ahead in the count. You know, important for Ryan Yarbrough to come out here and pound that zone. That's you can see Sucre telling him, "Come, come to me." I'm going to sit up outer half. 
Let's go get this guy. You've been given a three run lead because of the Rays little outburst. And a fastball misses. 3 0. So he's been all around the zone here to fall behind Castro. Those are on deck. There's a strike. Caught a part of the corner. on his fist and he fouls it so the count is full. The Rays with action in the bullpen. Row the righty. Alvarado the lefty. And ball four. Castro draws a leadoff walk in the seventh. Absolutely the last thing Garbro wanted to do and here comes Kevin Cash. They have Dozier do up and that's going to be it for Yarbro. And the Rays will make a pitching change brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers, Jake Perea will face off against the former Ray Alex Cobb, and Arrestes will break down Manny Machado, swinging a hot bat in their game against the Indians today. The Rays will be headed into Baltimore, starting a series and a three-city road trip on Tuesday. Eleventh appearance already for Chaz Rowe. Here it's a base runner. And he faces Brian Dozier. Through one of three with a run scored today. And he takes a strike. Now that ability by Chaz Rowe to start a slider at a right handed hitter break it to the middle for called strikes and then start one middle and break it off the plate to try to open up the strike zone and get chases. That's what makes him so effective. That's strike two. Yeah so those those first two pitches are the are the examples. Yeah. Well and here's the other thing it's as good as Dozier has been and we've highlighted him. You know, arguably the biggest infield threat in the American League for sure in terms of production and power. One and two. But a good part of that, and this is not to negate that at all because 
this guy probably is underappreciated in the general overall scope. But a lot of that came against left handed pitching last year. He had 331 against lefties and 250 against righties. Pitch is down 2 2 and with big power numbers against lefties as well. Slugging percentage. More home runs, of course, from the right side than left. A lot more at bats, but boy, against a lefty, look out. And he's tough against any pitching. So the Rays go with the severe right hander here in row. Shot misses. So the count is full after starting 0 2. Yeah, most of the time when you struggle, or not even struggle, but when you, you know, hit right, if you're a right handed hitter and obviously have more success against lefties, the right handed pitcher will have more success against you mainly because of the breaking ball. So then you bring in the extreme breaking ball guy yeah. for him. And, and I mean, it's one of those moves that really makes itself. But, but, got to execute the pitches and. Dozier's worked all the way back to a full count. 3 2 popped up. Foul ball. Will it be playable? Robertson there. He's got it. And there is a big, big out to retire Dozier. One away now. Torinos, Yarbrough, now Rowe. Here's Maurer. Maurer's been on base every time today. Two walks and a single. And he hits lefties and righties. No ball, no strikes. From row. Let's have another strike. One and two. Castro first, one away. Way up, two and two. Maurer has one prior at bat against Chaz Rowe, 0 for 1 against him. Grossman is on deck. Takes one low and another full count. All three hitters have worked full counts here in the seventh inning for Minnesota. Now how do you lay off this? A 2 2 count. You've got to cover the zone, and Joe Maurer able to hold up right there on a breaking ball that looked to be in the zone for an awful long time before coming out the bottom end. Ball four is wide. Well, after getting Dozier a walk to Maurer, who's on for the fourth time, pushes Castro up to second base. And now Grossman's going to be lifted. Miguel Sano is on to pinch hit. So 
So they're taking a shot with Sano here. And his power. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to stay in on Rose slider because he's going to see plenty of those. There's no doubt. Will he stay in or will that front side leak. Down that third base line. And the pitch is a strike. Ball and that got Sue Gray who's hopping around. He's already taken a foul ball off his right foot. Let's Quinn Wolcott the plate umpire know he's okay. He's hearing it from the dugout. He says, nope, don't bother to come out. Two strikes to count to Sano. Who does not have an official at bat against Rowe? And a little soft liner into center for a base hit. That will score Castro and send Mauer to third. 0 2, and Sano just served that one. He didn't hit it hard, but drives in the run. Well, we wondered if he was going to be able to stay in, and let's just say that he stayed in enough. It's all about giving yourself a chance and you're in a tough count here. Here's the breaking ball and just long enough on that bat. Right off the end. A cue shot. So now it's a two run ball game. And the Rays will make another pitching change. Back in a moment. Fox Sports Sun is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by your local Honda dealer. Two run ball game as the Rays make a pitching change. Jose Alvarado in this game. Eddie Rosario. Bats with men at first and third, and only one out. Rosario fouls it off his foot. Alvarado down there to make the pickup. He's going to leave the umpiring up to the umpire, and he's going to make the play anyway. Strike one on the foul ball. Sano at first, Maurer at third. A little 
bit wide with that one one and one. So Alvarado is the fourth race pitcher of the day. Twins have utilized four as well and they have further action in the bullpen. Ground ball right side. Window at Chavarria one, Miller two. The Rays get the double play ball out of Rosario. Four six three. Go to the bottom of the seventh. Six four Rays. A Tropicana Field just finishing up with take me out to the ball game. Middle of the seventh inning, the Rays with a four spot in the sixth have a 6 4 lead. They've out hit the Twins 10 6. Good day for Daniel Robertson. He's three for three. Danny Echevarria with a home run, a three run shot. CJ Crone. Open to scoring with his fifth home run of the year. And the Rays carry this lead into the bottom of the seventh, and a nice job by Jose Alvarado to clean up the top of the seventh with a double play ball. He got the 4 6 3 double play out of Eddie Rosario. And the Twins' bullpen has been an issue in this series. With a 13 and a half earned run average, 12 earned runs in eight innings. Rays hitting 390 in this series off the Minnesota bullpen. Guznets gave up the home run to Echevarria. So the number three hitter Carlos Gomez will face the right hander Alan Buznets to begin the bottom of the seventh defensive changes by the twins there was a big cut that was a good pitch to hit right there and Gomez fouled it back and that pitch was hanging up there and he took a quick cut and fouled it Sano's now at third Escobar's at short Adrianza's in left. Rosario's in center and Kepler's in right. So a lot of shifting around defensively for Minnesota Grossman out of the game. The 
Pitch is up. Upstairs to square the count at 2 2. Bottom of the seventh. Popped up. That's going to carry into the seats, holding the count even at two balls, two strikes. Miller next and then Robertson. There's that defensive arrangement. Sano inserted at third and all kinds of things change with the exception of Dozier Morrison and Castro. Yeah how about that the entire outfield the left side of the infield. Gomez out on strikes for the third time today. Out number one in the seventh. Well, even with the new bat, he broke the bat the last time he was up there. The new bat, and he's out on strikes. Climb the ladder, Uznitz coming with the fastball, big swing. He's able to jump it right over the bat. No, he got that one pitch. You know, he got that slider hanging out over the middle. That's the that's the pitch that he's looking for. Yep, he that knows started he's the see, bat. Yeah, and he knows he's going to see a lot of breaking balls. Of course, Uznitz. You know, finished him off with the fastball, but he's going to see a good number of right on right sliders. And when you get those hangers, you got to try to cash in. 2 0. Oh. Hildenberger's up in the bullpen again. He's been up a lot. Right hander throwing up the left sideline. He's got to wonder if he's going to ever get in again. <laughs> We've watched him warm up three or four times in this series. Yeah, he's worked as hard as any guy in the bullpen. He doesn't have an appearance in the series yet. He's like, I get this. I get this whole warming up thing. When do I get to go in there and stop being a decoy? Who's uh? Oh, that's going to. Yeah, the, the 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 lefty pointer, Bobby Pointer. Oh yeah, they decoyed him a little bit against the yeah. Rays early in that series, starting the season off. Two two now on Brand Miller. Did he go? He did on the appeal down to Hoy. So Buznitz with three strikeouts after giving up the home run and the infield hit. Just just can't hold up. You, know, you get that a, a powerful swing started on a fastball that's up. Going to be tough. Daniel Robertson three for three today. A couple singles and a double a run scored. Takes a slider down for a ball. One and one. He has another hit. Base hit into center. Robertson, four for four, makes the turn at first and holds. A very good day for Daniel Robertson. Boy, he did a great job of recognizing this breaking ball hanging. You know, he starts his load, gets ready, and you could just see him just watch him pause right here. Wait, get the foot down, wait, 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 and then fire. Boy, good recognition. And 
Look how he just slows everything up to try to keep things in rhythm. And that's a guy seeing the ball at the plate very, very well. So another call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Wrapping up the homestand with this one today. Off day tomorrow, picking up play Tuesday in Baltimore. It'll be Jake Faria against the former Ray Alex Cobb. A couple tough outings for Cobb over there. Chris Archer and Dylan Bundy in the game on Wednesday night, Thursday night. A bullpen effort for the Rays against right hander Chris Tillman to begin the three city trip Baltimore, Boston, and Detroit. Remember Hildenberger after all that work in the bullpen this series finally gets into a game with Joey Wendell up here. Wendell takes a breaking ball that stayed wide. So Robertson with his four hit day. Career high four hits four for four. Joey Wendell is two for three. Rolls it foul behind Ozzie Timmons down there the bullpen. Robertson with his very first big league four hit game. Lays off the curveball as it stayed outside. Two and one. A similar reaction in the sixth when he slowed it down a little bit and found himself driving in a run with a base hit to center. Foul out of play, third base side. Two balls, two strikes. Uh, he's been so balanced, you know, at the plate, and even when initially maybe a little bit fooled on the, you know, the velocity of a pitch, the hands have been able to stay back. He's been able to slow things down. Just the recognition has been off the charts. And that's why you see him, you know, hitting a lot of balls up the middle. See the shoot the ball into the gap the other way. He's homered to center field in this series. His first home run of the year was was into straightaway right field. Wendell's been doing kind of the same thing when he's going good. Mm -hmm. Both of these guys. And a take there for ball three. Hildenberger's gassed. <laughs> yeah, he's tired from warming side up. Work. He warmed up solidly for two days in a row. Three and two. A foul ball out of play with two outs, of course. Robertson breaking. He'll retreat to first. 
Hillenberger last year was in 37 games. More than a strikeout per inning ratio. And a cut and a miss on a pitch breaking down and in. Wendell strikes out against Hildenberger. We're going to go to the eighth. It's six four Rays. Big day here for the Rays. It's not only Kevin Kiermeyer's birthday, it also happens to be Earth Day, and it's the 25th anniversary of the local arm of that, which is called Tampa Bay Watch. Earlier today, the Rays, in part with J with Jable, doing their part to help out the Earth, donating $15,000 for habitat restoration, helping protect and restore the waters that surround our beautiful region. Guys, we'll have more on that coming up on Rays Live, the post-game show brought to you by W.B. Mason, and we also will hear from Kevin Cash and assorted Rays players in the clubhouse as they wrap up this nine-game homestand, we hope, in victorious fashion. Guys? All right, two innings to go. See if the Rays can complete the, their task of the day. They lead six to four. Logan Morrison leads off for Minnesota against Jose Alvarado. And the pitch is down. Alvarado came on, got the double play ball out of Rosario. And now Morrison, Escobar, and Kepler do up. It's down, 2 and 0. Oh. Romo up in the Rays bullpen. Foul out of play. It's two and one. And was hit by a pitch and then doubled home by Kepler in the sixth inning. Ground ball through the right side and a base hit against the lefty Alvarado. Well, not not a very Easy matchup at all for Logan Morrison, but he stays in there. Fastball in the upper 90s, finds a hole on the right side. Tying run comes to the plate. Nothing about the end of these ball games here in this series have been easy. Middle in. And now Escobar is going to be the hitter. Wow. 
one to strike 98. That home run he hit in the second inning came out a changeup. Since then he's gone out to center and has popped to short. Chop to short stop. And to Maria one first base not going to be in time. Escobar beat the attempt at a double play in at first. But they get Morrison. So Escobar reaches on a fielder's choice. One on one out. Well, this ball chopping, you see, Echeverria has got to take a half a step back to play it, and that gives Escobar just enough time to get down the line and beat out the return throw. There was no other play to be made. I mean, Echeverria made the only play that he could, but credit Escobar's hustle. This is a Minnesota team desperate for a win. Lost the first two games of this series. They're going to take off and go to New York. That place has never been easy for them to play. Kepler, that's a strike in on him. Yeah, they'll go up there and face Tanaka to open their series tomorrow. That's Odorizzi and Tanaka. They'll be up there for four. Two. Alvarado right now having his way with Kepler. Yeah, the, the first one kind of ran in and tied him up a little bit. That swing right there looked not comfortable at all. And I would be shocked if you'd go with anything else. Two. Rianz is on deck. Bullpen has been busy for Minnesota today, and more action down there right now. Anderson Reed up. Cut and a miss, so they get Kepler back with a fastball. Well, had trouble with it. Second pitch, fourth pitch of the at bat. He's out on strikes. That's why you wondered why they even messed around with the breaking ball. You could see, you know, you forgive the first swing against the fastball, but the last two, he's taken passes at it and been tardy, and just the swings have not looked comfortable at all. Two gone. Escobar at first. Here Adrianza. Liner into right field. That's going to drop in front of Gomez. So Adrianza is aboard. Two men on with two men out. Well, the Twins. Collect their eighth hit now with two men on the potential tying runs at first. Jason Castro, the catcher, is due, but we'll have a Garver. hitter for him and Mitch Garver. Well, Castro, a left handed bat, and Garver, a right handed bat, will now hit. And Kevin Cash comes out. He's had Romo in the bullpen. And we'll take a break. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery.
Tampa Bay area. We're in the eighth inning. Wrap up game of the homestand for the Rays in this series against the Minnesota Twins. Rays have a 6 4 lead. A couple men on base for Minnesota with two outs in the eighth, and Sergio Romo gets the call. Well, he's on for the eighth time and has struck out nine in five and two thirds innings. Face that the backup catcher here in Mitch Garver. Garver takes a look at the first pitch too high. Garver got to the big leagues last year with Minnesota. He was in 23 games, hitting 133 this year. Pitch is low, 2 and 0. Garver 0 for 4 in the game. Last night, a little chat here with between Sucre and Romo. Strike after the little get together. Two and one. Frustrated by Sergio Romo there too. He was you know, trying to get back into this count, and it's been slider, slider, slider. Watch this right here. Yeah, he's not happy, missing low. So you're going to get a steady diet of the breaking balls with Romo on the hill, especially if you're a right-handed hitter. And he walks Garver. Just not been well, able to find the release point yet, Wayne. Yeah, and that walk loads the bases for the top of the order, Brian Dozier. Colome up in the bullpen, and boy, you see the difference in the moves here with Castro lifted. Left handed bat lifted. And that got Alvarado out of the game, Romo in, and now the walk to Garber, and the bases are loaded. With Brian Dozier up here, and he is dangerous. Pitch inside. Romo touch for the grand slam here on Friday. Mario lifted that 0 2 pitch almost off the ground. Yeah, look at that. It tells you right there he's looking for it. Likes that pitch in that area anyway. Got one, able to get underneath it. And now Brian Dozier with a shot here with the bases juiced. And I'll tell you, that the, the sliders here by Romo, he's either swept them off the plate away or you know, releasing that pitch a little bit early and it's staying up and in on these righties. Just cannot find the release point yet, the sweet spot, to get that pitch where he wants it. 2 and 0 the count to Dozier. There's a strike. Dozier takes it. A big spot right here. The potential tying run is in scoring position. Bases loaded in a 6-4 ball game. 2-1 to Dozier. And a base hit into left. Escobar scores. Here comes a throw to the plate. 
and this game is tied. Audrey Anza crosses the plate. Garber to second on the base hit by Dozier. It's 6-6. Six, six. Now this whole series, it's been the late innings when things start to get weird out here. And once again, yeah, the, the walk to Garver and then tries to sneak that fastball in there and Brian Dozier having none of it. Gets the head out and doesn't have a lot of room to work with, but boy, he gets it in there. Now Joe Maurer is going to be at the plate. Maurer takes one wide. He's been on four times today with three walks and a single. Allowing a walk and a base hit. Too low. 2 and 0. Romo, the fifth raised pitcher of this game. Five pitchers for Minnesota. To strike two and one. Well, the Twins got a run in the seventh, making it a two run game. Well, two runs to tie in the eighth with Garver on second and Dozier at first. Three and one. And Joe Mauer just this entire ball game, and he's taken all those walks with the base hit, but just will not bite. Rays have continually been enticing him with pitches just like this, and you can see he's not even really flinching. Sees it out of the hand, understands that ball's going to be out of the zone, even if it is close, lets it go and continues to wait for his pitch. Wings and sends a fly ball into left. Denard Span is there to catch it. So two runs score on the base hit by Brian Dozier, and that ties this game. Moving into the bottom of the eighth, it's six-six.
base hit in the top of the eighth. Grove in two and tied this game. That's where it's been hanging out. There you are, and it's still intact. Well, not when we get a hold of it. <laughs> Bludgeoned. And usually early. It's lasted into the eighth inning. Well, a new battery. Garber takes over behind the plate, and Addison Reed is the new pitcher. Well, he's done a nice job in his eight ball games, ten innings of work, ten strikeouts, an ERA of under one. Jesus Sucre takes a look at the first pitch, and that's ball one. Sucre, then Malik Smith, and Adani Echeverria. Up the middle and a base hit into center. Well, Reed gave Sucre a little bit of that crossfire he has. And a base hit right back over the mound. Well, the bottom of the order, it's been active in this series, and Sucre is going to be lifted for a pinch runner there in Johnny Field, but a big hit. You know, the pitch right out over the plate. You're right, crossfire action, but you just stay buried in, in there. And you got a pitch where he could. Just reach out. Wasn't down. It's up a little bit. You got a good chance, and everybody appreciative of Sucre's work today. Not only, I mean, obviously on that base hit, work behind the plate, but a good start here in the eighth. Johnny Field running for Sucre, and Malik Smith is at the plate. It's a strike. Sano in at third. It's a strike, go two. Call him up in the bullpen again. O2 a step back there for time. Anderson Reed with the White Sox and the Diamondbacks, the Mets. Part of the year with Boston. Now in Minnesota. Alex fouls it. So Reed for an inning in the game here Friday night. He pitched the eighth inning. And Malik Smith on a fly ball to right. So the bottom part of this order getting another look at him with Smith down 0-2 and then Echeverria due to hit next. And this one to the backstop. It hit Malik Smith. And down to second goes Field. Smith hit by a pitch. Really yanked that one across to get Smith. Now look at how badly that gets in. It looked like it got Malik's right on the top of that right foot, just grazing it as he trying to get out of the way. It's quick to point that out to the plate umpire Quinn Walcott. So now field at second, Smith at first, and here is Adani Echeverria who gave the Rays a big lift in the sixth when he hit an 0-2 curveball out of here for a home run. On the top of that right foot. I mean, if it grazed it, it 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 caught the top of the strings. In that shoe. Echeverria is showing the bunt against the bat back. One ball, no strikes.
Danny showing the bunt and attempts the bunt, fouls it. One and one. Well, our bonefish grill, fresh catch of the day. And that would be that home run when Echeverria caught that 0 2 curveball and hit it out. That's exactly right. 0 uh, 2 curveball and uh, letting everybody at home know about it, too. He bunts and pops it up, foul, right back over the screen. He's trying to move the runners over. Both teams right now with men in scoring position today. Three for eight. The Rays were seven of nine in last night's game. Field at second, Smith at first. And a foul ball. Still right there and wanted two. And strike three called on the outside corner. Echeverria caught looking. That's the first out. And the runners remain at first and second. Well, the two attempts to get the bunt down do not work out, and it comes back to bite the Rays as that fastball is well located by Reed. And they're able to get the first out. No advance of the runners. Denard Span fouls it. First and second, one out. And Denard Span with men in scoring position this year, nine of 17, hitting 529. And here he is again with Field on second base. high it's one and one he's done a great job uh, of not getting too anxious not expanding his zone forcing the hitter into the hitting area and then when they've done that he's not missed yeah it's, it's been uncanny the way he has been disciplined and has just waited a lot of long at bats a lot of long at bats ground ball headed toward the middle hits the mound Dozier out at second and out at first Dozier got a friendly hop off the mound there to start the 4-6-3 double play. And the Rays, after putting two men on, leave one, do not score, and we're going to go to the ninth inning in this tie ball game.
The sixth Rays pitcher. And he's on for the tenth time on to face now what is the middle part of this lineup Sano Rosario and Morrison Kevin Cash has gone through his bullpen here this afternoon and not going to be a, a safe situation so column a in here top of the ninth Ramos is going to be his battery mate behind the plate and off we go Dwayne yes we do Sano who drove in a run with a base hit in the seventh opens the ninth Takes the first pitch upstairs. Colome got credit for the win. He pitched a perfect tenth inning in the game here Friday night. Got three ground ball outs, including a ground ball to third from Sano to end the game. And there's a big cut and miss. It's one and one. Torinos worked the first four and two thirds. Then Yarbrough, Rowe, Alvarado, Romo. Now it's Colome. That's a strike. Now one and two. Rays with a dozen hits in this game. Minnesota with nine. That one foul. Torino's four and two thirds. Yarbrough an inning and a third. Row a third. Alvarado an inning and a third. Romo a third. And now Alex Colome. Strike three call. Fastball. Caught him looking mid 90s with that one. Boy, he set him up. You know, that cutter in Sano was, I think, looking for it. Got caught looking for it. Was certainly looking for something on the outer half and got locked up. Perfect pitch. Boy, letting it rip. And Sano knew it. Eddie Rosario with a run batted in today back in the third. Pitches a strike. Rosario wants to hook. He wants to get out there, something out over the plate, and hook it into right field. And so they're doing a great job of early on staying away. Well, that that shift right there will let you know that he wants to hook. <laughs> no, one ball, two strikes. Yeah, there's nobody near the left field or third base line. No. And Robertson. One two count. Rosario one for four in his career coming into this series against Paula May. Two and two. Big miss right there. Logan Morrison is on deck. He, on the other hand, is three out of four against Colome. It's fouled away. Six 
still a 2 2 count. Rosario is the guy with the grand slam in the eighth inning of the game Friday. Took the Rays 10 innings to win that one. Tied 6 6 in the ninth today and a cut and a miss. Rosario is out on strikes. He got to know looking Rosario swinging. The bases are going to be empty with two outs. Now Logan Morrison. He's been hit by a pitch and walk or and single. Scored a run after being hit by a pitch in the sixth and had the base hit to right in the eighth. Bounds it back, strike one. Opening cutter to him. Back, that's going to be out of play. 0 2. And Morrison shaking his head because he realized had a good swing there at a fastball that was pretty true and stayed right down the middle. Maybe the only pitch that he sees during the course of an at bat that he felt like he could handle. Well, call a man the Ray certainly hoping so. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know what? With the count 0 and 2, you could start to open things up a little bit. They're going back down and away. He lays off, pitch down. You give yourself a couple of shots to get him to chase, and then and then have to go back in and make a pitch. So one two count. Morrison homered off Archer here Friday night. Takes another one down. Two and two. The ball put into play for Colome. The 2 2. Tapper foul. Raids at one point led 6 to 3, but the Twins scored a run in the seventh. They got two in the eighth to tie. Brian Dozier's base hit drove in the two in the eighth to knot it up. Colomay ready to go with the 2 2 pitch for the second time to Morrison. He got him. He strikes out the side. Getting Morrison swinging, and we're going to go to the bottom of the ninth. Crone, Gomez, and Miller do up against Fernando Rodney.
We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. We're tied 6 6. Alex Colomay striking out the side at the top of the ninth. Minnesota's going to stay with Addison Reed. And stepping in is C.J. Crone. Making the first pitch for a ball. Crone, Gomez, and Miller do up for the Rays with Reed on the hill, and there's ball two. Well, giving him a little bit of respect. Here, C.J. Crone's been swinging the bat well the last week and a half. He's had a heck of a series. Hit a home run already today. It's a strike. Everything away. Finally staying away from that middle in look where he has put some pretty good swings together. And a foul back the other way. Don't do it. Don't you do it. It'll cost you. <laughs> two two now to Crone. And a base hit. Right back into center field. Rosario over to make the pickup, and the Rays get the leadoff hitter aboard. Crone aboard. And the Rays will get a runner. So there you go. The Rays put the leadoff man on at the bottom of the ninth inning in this tie game. Pitch to handle. Middle of the plate. Right in the middle of the plate. CJ Crone right back up the middle. And Dwayne, a, a pinch runner here with what Kevin Cash has done with the bullpen. I don't know how he's done it here in April, but he's used 32 players today. <laughs> Here's Rem Snyder. Hey, is this September? It feels like yeah, it. Yeah, trying to decipher the uh, scorecard right now. Oh, look at mine. It's a disaster. <laughs> Dwayne it's so you. neat and clean. Well, yeah, it's because I've made no changes. <laughs> I still have Sucre in the game. All right. You know, well, Ref Chirinos <laughs> is still in there as far as I'm concerned. Well, Ref Snyder running at first. Carlos Gomez is the hitter. At home plate after that long home run. There was no doubt about that one. How about the Ray Lewis into home plate? <laughs> wow. We'll take a look at this. He knew it. Right away. Looking into the Rays dugout after he connected on that one. No doubt about it. So the Rays sweep the Minnesota Twins. Ten innings on Friday, eight seven. Saturday, ten to one, and today, eight six on the walk off by Carlos Gomez. Let's go down to Rich right now. Thank you, Dwayne. Well, if there's one player on this Rays roster who has a flair for the dramatic, it's this guy, Carlos Gomez. The walk off shot. Take us through that at bat. I mean, you know, I be the, the first three at bat. Like, um, I never lost my concentration. I said. They're gonna give me something to hit, and before that I bat, I I pray. I say, if a crowd hit a hit a double, I gonna bunt it. But he hit a hit, and I look at my, to my dog out, and my manager give me this, and that show me uh, confidence. And I say, let's all throw me something in the play, and I gonna and I gonna hit him out. 
four straight wins now for this team, five of the last six. Uh, this homestand ends on a real positive note. What can you say about the chemistry on the field and in the clubhouse right now? I mean, I say it before, it's a lot of talent in this clubhouse, in this team, and, uh, and we will leave each other. You know, we will start rough. But everything is to get together. The pitching be throwing the ball good. And uh, we give it confidence to the pitch how we bounce it back every time they make us on run. We get it back as strong as so, you know, that's how that's how we play baseball. After the first extra inning win in this series, you might have had the quote of the year afterwards where you said, you feel sexy right now. How do you feel after this walk-off shot? I mean, it's the first one. It's the first one. And this is for my son, Jandel, that I told today that I'm gonna that I gonna hit a home run. So my first walk-off for 12 years and I'm really excited and happy for that. And it looks like you knew it right when you made contact. I mean, I don't know where's the ball land, but I know it's going way deep. Well, Carlos Gomez sends everybody home happy. It's a three game sweep of the Minnesota Twins and now the Rays, as we said, have won four straight and five of their last six. Carlos Gomez, the hero in extras. We send it back up to the booth in Duane and B.A. First career walk off home run for the Rays right fielder Carlos Gomez Colome who won the game here Friday the winner today 8 6 the final for Brian Anderson Dwayne stats great to have you with us hope you've enjoyed the telecast 8 6 Rays walk it off.